The Church in Autumn by Emily Almada. The autumn breeze against the warm sun rays appeared from the opposite side of the shadowed church. The grass, glowing of sunlight, was a vibrant green. This could have been mistaken for a spring day if it weren't for the two, nearly bare, orange leaf trees on the side of the church. It was early morning. The sky gave off a beige colored glow. It was just before church, before everyone arrived. Soon the churchyard would be filled with people, before the crowd, before people arise from their beds and spring out the door. Enjoy the quiet that is held within this painting, for it holds the tranquility of that perfect autumn morning. Hi, my name is Rachel Baldy, and I'm going to read my poem, Homesick, inspired by a picture of a family in sanctuary at the First Congregational Church of Old Lyme. Homesick. Open doors reach like arms, the child's only caress. And burned in brain, she remembers scold, never forget the new country's bless. Wooden walls encompassing, lining pews fade to black. A place of worship or a cell, jubilant expressions lack. Bronze door handles and towering walls, one light to shine the path. A family spirit smile falls, the new world's silent wrath. And upon departure had no doubt, surely headed to a living better. The woe untold covering faces now, as transparent as the glass door header. And wonder if war, the war that was fought, or if their toil was all for naught. The sweet life, dreamt, sweet life dreamt of never brought a different outcome than one thought. Because illusions can fade quickly, and you awaken from the mirage, as past familiarities seem better than the new life's camouflage. And though these unknowns pursue, and one may feel alone, a family standing together united will forever be a home. These children so young, only six years old, having to move from a place they once called home. Too young to get why, too innocent to see evil, but the fear in their eyes burned. The confusion on their face, they don't get why, why they had to say goodbye to their family, to their friends, to their home. But eventually they come together again and build a new home in a new country with freedom, with safety. They regain their faith and lose that fear. The unknown becomes their home. These innocent children learn the truth. America is their home. Hi, my name is John Pazorji, and today I'll be reading for you my poem, To the Hamu Family, Reflections of a Past. This poem was inspired by a portrait of the Hamu family, which was a part of the Nothing More American exhibit at the Florence Griswold Museum. The Hamu family were sat on a couch, and here's my poem. Nothing More American. The still, framed foil of a life left behind. Life shall persist wherever the setting. An adorning, eternal reminder of the life you've left behind. Your past shall never be forgotten. Hope torn, freedom lost, perilous troubles for a new future, remembrance of a past, for promise, for the promise of hope and freedom that the future brings. Now, smiles born anew, promises of new clothes, glasses, and looks, new work, education, and futures. The potential for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Here we sit with a clear focus, not gazing beyond, but rather at ourselves. Here we sit feeling safe and satisfied. Thank you. What makes someone an American? Is it the kind of food one eats, be it Nahari, poulet, or apple pie? Is it the car one drives that makes them American, be it a Toyota or a Chevrolet? Is it the type of music one listens to that makes them American, be it folk, pop, or drum? Is it the color of one's skin that makes them American, be it black, white, or brown? Is it the type of God one worships that makes him American, be it Yahi or Allah? Is it the type of sport one plays, like soccer or football, or the amount of money one has, endless dollars, francs, or rupee? 
Is it a language that one speaks, be it Urdu, French, or English? Or is it the clothes one wears, like a robe or a t-shirt, that makes them American? Is it the kind of job one works, like a business owner or a lawyer? Or the type of family one has that makes them American? No. It is not the way someone eats their food that makes them American. In fact, all Americans eat their food in different ways. It is not one's language that makes them American, nor who they live with. In fact, Americans all speak in different tongues. It is not one's profession that makes them American either. In fact, all Americans work different jobs. America is not made up of one type of American, but many different people of different cultures that make up the country, and as all these different people are still Americans. Americans are all different in culture, but not in love. It is one that has a love for their country of America that truly makes them American, not the way they speak or dress or eat. Even with united love, it is still one's uniqueness that makes them American. Each American eats differently and talks differently and prays differently, but every American is still an American. My name is Mara Kelly, and I will be reading my poem, Love Renders Victory, which was inspired by the Hameau family exhibit at the Florence Griswold Museum. Two. Focus. Strike the lighter. Bring it to the candle. Breathe. They watched me stoically. But I made it. We made it. Dinner time. Three. This is what joy looks like. Women holding hands, learning, growing. Mother and son, a boy's fingers tangle around his mother's. Together, we dance as love. Four, elder, holding the little as if he will never see him again. As if this is the first time they are seeing each other in years. As if screaming, I love you so much, I will never let you go. Head buried in the little shoulder as if it is the only place he can breathe. As if his emotion is drowning him and his brother's shoulder is both fresh air and support keeping him above the raging current. He needs to wrap his scarred arms around his brother and hold him tight. If he were to let go, the world would smash into infinitesimally small pieces. He could never recover. Little, with something poking out of his pocket... A passive object, just letting life happen. Arms out, hands tilted slightly inward, fingers just beginning to curl, and almost embraced. Face smashed into Elder's shoulder, glasses pressed tightly against the bridge of his nose. Breathing does not come easy in that shoulder of his brother, but love does. Five. Acceptance. Integration, strangers, family, connection, joy, space, depleted, touching, eyes, smiles, hands, up, mother, draped, fingers, road, almost Christmas time. Six, floating, walking on water little rising off of his heels to reach. Daughter with left knee bent, throwing her head back in laughter. Elder, full of mirth, looks at sister, arms not raised, as if he forgot or got the timing wrong. Father, arms completely lifted, feet pressed firmly into the dock, back arched, hands thrusted into the sky with pride. Mother, almost entirely concealed, together the dream a land of opportunity a place where a cloth of red and white stripes combined with 50 white stars and a blue background waves a symbol of a nation connected in this glorious nation our nation be the land of the free the home for those who can't stay in a country that isn't safe anymore a dream that you could hope for a new star for you and your children a wish you can make come true because this land's doors are open Come to our land, they say. All are welcome. Those who hope for a better future will have one in this land of red, 
white, and blue, a promise made to all for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Everything looks better on the outside, doesn't it? But now that you're here, are you happy? This is a no-choice life. What happened to all those promises we didn't leave our country only to enter one with false hope and dreams crushed? The woman who bows her head, the girl forced to grow up so young, the mother afraid for her child, the father who can't protect his family. This is a no-choice life. A woman who bows her head, her portrait black and white, devoid of all color, a perfect contrast to the flamboyant patterns of her shirt. What happened to the welcome party at the door? Or the promise for equality without discrimination? The public acts as though we are the cause of all the bad in the world, a parasite in their perfect country? This is a no-choice life. The father who wishes he had the power to change his situation, but in this world, he has no voice that means something. The silence of this room won't be filled with his little girl's laughter. Those who want to help us are few and far between, but we are still trying to make a life in what seems like a world against us. This is a no-choice life. A mother afraid because her child has to integrate into a world unknown without a mother. Footsteps echo in an empty room, one that should be filled with laughter. How quickly can a family of three turn into a family of one? This is a no-choice life. The girl has such big brown eyes, but instead of wonder, they are filled with tears. She is forced to leave the love of her parents. Her heart is broken. This is a no-choice life. A land of opportunity, a sanctuary of ostracized families asking, when will the government come knocking at my door? Was the life of an immigrant is a no-choice life. Murals Inside of My Mind by Isabel Sacrister in the room preserved, with nothing to say, our distance found us. Still of something in space and time, paradise draped in the back of my mind. Vibrations of marigolds and garlic, beyond bits of sky, the water crashes. Silence follows. Light takes the translucent paradise, carrying the warmth to where I sit, redolent of seasoned books. My gaze lost at heart center, here, the aura of that room. In a vessel gilded with walnut lacquer, let it rock, back and forth. Hello, my name is Sydney Smirno. I will be reading my poem, I Love the World. This poem is inspired by a few pictures and drawings from the exhibit, Nothing More American, from the Florence Griswold Museum. I love the world so you the children with hope. I love the world so the children with broken hearts. I love the world so the children with, whose parents were taken away by America because we don't understand. America, the land of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. From kids who loved the world, the world who took their parents. From forgotten words to a forgotten language. A daughter who hasn't learned a mother's native language and a mother who hasn't learned a new language, unable to speak, getting lost in translation. Daughter only remembering a few words, mother only knowing some, son not knowing any. I love the world, said the children with growing and shrinking hope. I love the world, say the children who want to understand why they can't have their parents. I love the world, say the children who just want peace. Struggles of violence to struggles of sanctuary. Coming here in desperation to get away from horrible places to get sent back to the place they want to get away from. Coming to America to find sanctuary from a bad place to only get treated like they are the bad one of the bad people from the bad place. They are told they will never be welcomed here because they are not from here. Seeing people of their kind on the news being mistreated and leaving their houses to get treated the same way. Never understanding why they can't be treated the same way. They have the right papers that say they are an American citizen, therefore they are legal. Wanting peace, but all they get is hate. Children of parents who are trying to become legal, but something always gets in the way. 
I love the world, say the children who still have hope. I love the world, say the children who have survived horrors. I love the world, wrote the girl who drew the broken heart. You are welcome, say the children who understand. A poem by Madeline Stanley. A group of young adults gathered in a circle, all in white, gray, and black. Boys and girls, all different ages, all who join hands. A group of friends gathered in a circle, water surrounding them. It moves slowly, washing away their fear. Laughter echoing behind, giving them peace from the chaotic world. A family gathered in a circle, trees and homes behind them, blurred and gray, trees full of leaves and hope, surrounding a family in a circle. Hello, my name is Hannah Uphold, and I will be reading my poem called My Family. It is inspired by one of the photos I saw on the Florence Griswold website because I was unable to go to the actual museum. My family. It's just my mom, dad, and I for 158 days, residing in a church basement, able but not allowed to leave. Dad's ankle suffocated by a thick black bracelet. Why? Mom and dad talk about ICE authorities, knowing our location through the device. A phone rings early in the morning when I'm asleep. ICE. Why? Our living space limited. One bedroom, no windows. One bathroom, no windows. The shower, a garden hose connected to a faucet. Why? A guitar leans against a wall. Bongos rest on a shelf just above. Strangers teach me how to play both instruments. Why? Hi, I'm Nadia Zavoy, and I'm going to be presenting my Florence Griswold Museum poem, um, Awaiting the Final Church Bell. The autumn air fills my lungs as the scenery paints within my eyes. Not a word is spoken. The flies buzz around me, the church bell echoes, the osprey hunts, hunts for prey while the chipmunks hide away. As I lie within the earth, uh, dirt fills my clenched hands. The evening air bites up my nose. My body begins to tremble as the leaves wrap around me. The flowers gleam in evening light. The wind sings them a song, which leaves me entranced, awaiting the final church bell.